A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? 
Say to those who are of filfer heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert, and the burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read together um, from the Book of Common Prayers, page 759, Psalm 116, verses 1 through 8, responsively by whole verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of, of death, death entangled me. me. The, the grip, grip of, of the grave, grave took hold of me. I, I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray to you, save my life. Gracious, Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our, Our God is full of compassion. compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn, Turn again to, to your rest, O oh my soul, for the Lord has treated, treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, Yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also, the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a word of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and of bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed, and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. 
He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Abide in me, O Christ, and I in you. Amen. Please be seated. In some sense, I wish that Peter could have heard our psalm that we just said together. Because I wonder if it would have given him some comfort and maybe helped him avoid some of the harsh words that Jesus put to him and reminded him what he, Jesus, was about and who he was. I'll read these words from Psalm 116, just the first eight verses, which we put, uh, which we just said together. If you can imagine maybe Peter hearing them, and what Peter, how they might have soothed some of Peter's worries, perhaps, about who Jesus was, and what he didn't like, Jesus was saying. Maybe if he had remembered these words, he could have found himself in a little bit different place. I love the Lord because God has heard the voice of my supplication, because God has inclined God's ear to me whenever I called upon God. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I brought very low, and God helped me. Turn again to your rest, O oh my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I remember now, I, Peter, perhaps remembering all of this, I can now walk in the presence of the Lord and in the land of the living. There's something calming to me and soothing about that, those verses of that particular psalm, right? And I think... Maybe Peter forgot for a moment, or maybe Jesus was still trying to get through to the disciples what Jesus' life and ministry and death was going to mean for their world and for them. Peter didn't understand all of that, or maybe he had glimpsed it, but it was so fleeting and could just away it could go. We can take consolation in that Peter does get there. But in this particular situation, Jesus looks 
at Peter and says, get behind me, Satan. You have your mind on human things, not divine things. Peter, I think, is coming out of a place of wanting comfort, but desiring comfort coming from an attempt to control things. And to tell Jesus, no, 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 that is not how all of this is going to go down. And Jesus, of course, has come to let go, right? He is constantly letting go. I think he had to sort of let go to even arrive in our world and take on flesh. Because there's a part of being human and in the flesh where things just happen. And you're kind of along for the ride at times. And there's that human part of Jesus that he had to experience that to really fully connect with who we are as humans. And so you see those things sort of butt up against each other. Jesus in his like, we have to let go. There's going to be this part of my life and these pieces of my life where I, I, I'm going to lose control. And yes, I will suffer. And yes, I will die. I can take comfort in knowing that I will rise again. But all of these things are going to happen first. And Peter does not want any part of that. That is not the Messiah that Peter thinks about and what his idea of the Messiah is. Peter wants certainty. I think he wants control. And he certainly doesn't want to hear Jesus describe the opposite of that which is exactly what Jesus described to those around him there gathered. And so I can so identify with Peter and his human just way of being in the world in its struggle and in its beauty. Peter's sort of on the struggling side here in this particular passage. And so the second verse in the Psalm 116, the cords of death entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me, I came to grief and sorrow. And I, Peter, forgot what this journey with Jesus was going to do for me and the places it might take me and to be open to where those could be. He wasn't so sure about that, and so he was offended. He's very human, and so much of Peter I can relate to in that. Peter wants to hide things away and keep everything safe and has forgotten that the incarnation of Jesus in and among us is going to draw all of that out of us and to have us show up and be real and present and open to the things that life brings, and that means we have to let go sometimes. I think that's Peter's challenge in this moment. I think we each have our own different challenges when it comes to really allowing God to see our heart and to offer that to God, much like Psalm 116 reminds us, when we can do that, when we can offer our heart to God, then all of these beautiful things can happen. doesn't mean that life will be easy, but as the last verse says, I will walk in the presence of the Lord, and I will be in the land of the living. So that's our task as humans, right? To continue to offer our hearts to God, even when it's not easy, even when it's comfortable. And so I was thinking a few things that keep me from offering my heart to God is this, uh, there's several of them, I won't share all of them, but there's a couple of them I think that probably, I hope, imagine would resonate with you all as well. First off, sometimes it's hard to offer your heart to God because it's messy and it's embarrassing. And you're like, oh, I don't want anyone, I don't want God to see this. I love that about Peter because he's all the time putting it out there. <laughs> it isn't pretty. He's so real. And it's whatever is going on in Peter's head and heart. That's sort of the foil that, that the gospel gives us and how Jesus interacts with that. 
But there's also another part of Peter in the sense that he really wants to stay in control. And I know none of us can identify with that at all in our lives. I don't need help, no thank you. I've got this. You can move along, Jesus, I'm fine. And then sometimes I can forget to offer my heart to God and ask God for help and receive the gift of grace that that psalm really does offer and remind me of is so readily available because I can just get distracted and I can get too busy thinking in our kind of especially world of social media likes and clicks and you know all the things that bombard us all the time that say look at me look at us look at this thing don't you need it and then you start going 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 and you get so busy seeking validation in other places oftentimes that you forget really where that validation comes from i think peter ex could experience in many ways all of this but today I think Peter especially was trying to seek comfort in the knowledge of what's next and control and certainty. It's an age-old human challenge. And that's where Jesus says, let's not set our hearts on human things. Rather, let's go for the divine things. Leave behind the human worries the desire to control and mitigate fear, the validation to be reminded that we are enough. We can never do all of that on our own and outside of God. And I know enough and y'all know enough, that's a hard, hard way to live. And that's what Jesus was talking about, I think. Because he goes on to say, essentially, if we live with our focus on human things, what are we going to profit to gain the whole world, all of those human things, but we're going to forfeit our life? And so I see this sort of, okay, well, so what do I do with that, and how do I avoid that? Because that doesn't sound really lovely and um, something that I want to continue to experience. I think the most helpful image for me is to know that God wants our whole hearts, each of our hearts, to be deeply engaged with us and desires that. And desires not only just our hearts, but I think wants to hold them. And that that is an open invitation, always there. I can imagine God saying, let me wrap that heart of yours in the divine. Let me, I hope, soothe your heart so that you can lose yourself in me and lose or at least sort of quell those human distractions that we talked about that Peter often exemplifies and that resonate with me in the psalm verse the cords of death entangled me the grip of the grave took a hold of me I came to grief and sorrow Talk about losing your life, right? And so take comfort and know that that open invitation is always there, right? Jesus might rebuke G uh, Peter in one moment, in one story, and yet Peter shows up and keeps trying, and Jesus is right there with him always saying, come to me all ye who are burdened, weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me that I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Please rise as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, or the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for, for our families, families friends, friends, and, and neighbors, neighbors, and, and for, for those who are alone, alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for, for all who work for, for justice, justice, freedom, freedom and, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims, for the victims of, of hunger, hunger fear, fear injustice, injustice, and, and oppression. oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For, for those, those who minister, minister to the sick, the friendless, the friendless and, and the needy. needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For, for all, all who, who proclaim, proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our presiding bishop, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers. For, for all, all who serve, serve God and God's, God's church. church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Abby, Bonnie, Butch, Cody, Colleen, the Cox family, Craig, Dave, David, David M, Debbie L, Ellen, Alyssa, Amelia, Emily, Everett Lees, Rector of Christ Church in Tulsa, Glenn B, Helen, Jean, Jeremy June, the Lees family, Leo, Leslie, Lucille, Martha, Noor, Rita, R.L., Riker, Scott, Sherry, Terry, and all military and first responders. For Heather. Okay. Hear us, Lord. For, for your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise, and praise your, your name, name forever, forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have your place in your eternal kingdom, especially June Harris and Kay Love. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put, put their, their trust, trust in you.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings in all creation as we shout with joy.
please stand, sit, or kneel. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died, for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ, and grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness. of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may it be with us and remain with us. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. 